if you want the fastest possible way to make $3,000 as a copywriter, like this week fast, you're gonna wanna watch this video until the end. Are you serious? What I'm gonna teach you is very specific and massively valuable service that you can reach out to businesses and offer them in exchange for a lump sum payment of anywhere from $1,000 to over $10,000, depending on how big they are. We'll say three to 5K on average. The best part is this is something that will take you a few hours tops and will make businesses so much more money that they'll be more than happy to pay you. This is frankly probably the world's most simple business model and I'm amazed that I've never heard anyone else talking about this. Here is what you're gonna do. Let's do this. You are gonna join as many businesses email lists as you possibly can. You're gonna see which people's emails are going to spam. You're gonna reach out to them and you're gonna to offer to help them get their emails out of spam, guaranteed, or they don't pay. Then you're gonna get them out of spam, collect your $3,000 paycheck, and then use it to join CMB. The last part is optional, but highly recommended. What do you think? Should they join CMB? Yeah. But that's it, that's the whole strategy, all right? You do this once a week, you can make over $10,000 a month working like five to 10 hours a week. If that, it's a pretty good hack to be honest. So if it's so easy, then how are you able to get away with charging so much for it? Well, simple, because businesses' emails going to spam is a huge problem that is costing these businesses thousands, probably tens of thousands of dollars every single month. Emails that land in the spam folder typically get 5% open rates or less. So if you're able to get them in the primary tab and get their open rates to 20% or more with just this one change without changing anything else, they will be making an extra 5K, 10K, 20K a month or more depending on the size of their list. So of course they're happy to pay you 3K or 5K one time to make an extra six figures in sales every single year. Just like getting people out of the promo tab that we talked about last week, this is a perfect sweet spot between minimum effort and maximum results for the client. Everybody wins and that is the beauty of this system. Now, having said that, let's talk about how to actually do this step by step. Say hi Luna, say hi to the camera. Say hi to the people. Luna says hi. So step one is you are going to create a new test email account in Gmail, free Gmail account, sign up to as many people's email lists as you possibly can. All right, I'm talking a thousand email lists, like literally every email list in every niche you can possibly imagine. Go to Facebook ads library, ClickBank, Google, scroll through Instagram, click on every single ad you see and sign up for everyone's email list until you have seen so many ads that you literally want to die from looking at ads. Step two, wait a day or so until your inbox is fucked six ways to the highway with emails. And some of them should be going to spam by now. Step three, for all the emails that land in spam, which are legit businesses, which is not hard to tell which businesses are Nigerian printers and which businesses are real, you're gonna reach out to them and you're gonna say, hey, I've been on your list for quite a while and I've noticed that quite a few of your emails are going to spam, right? I'm not sure how long this has been a problem, but it's definitely something that you're gonna to wanna to fix sooner rather than later. As your emails are only getting 20% of the opens, clicks and sales that they should be getting, which depending on the size of your list could mean tens of thousands of dollars a month that you're pissing down the drain. The good news is depending on the cause, there's a relatively quick solution to get your emails back in the inbox where they belong. I've got a bit of time free later this week. I'm happy to jump on a quick call and walk you through how it works if you want and how to fix it. And if you want to hire me to just do it for you, you know, we can talk about that as well, but no pressure either way, I'm here to help. Send that to them, see what they say. And if that doesn't work, you're still not getting responses, you can try sending an Alex Edwards Loom style video like the one I broke down in this video here. Step four, you're going to jump on a call ask them some questions to learn a little bit more about their business, where they're at, where they're trying to go, what's getting in the way. And then you're gonna show them how bad this spam problem really is, how much it's really costing them. Take their list size, multiply it by about 1.5X, and that is roughly how much they're losing every single month due to their emails going to spam. Huh? And that number is likely gonna be at least a few thousand dollars a month. And then you're gonna present your offer. You're gonna say, hey, if I could guarantee that I could get you out of the spam folder and keep you out forever, what would that be worth to you? Shut up and then see what they say. Then you can say, hey, you know, it's common for brands like yours to pay 5K or even 10K to fix this problem. And they're typically more than happy to do that because it makes them an extra five or even $10,000 every month. Right, that's a 12X return after a year. We're talking 100 to 500X return after 10 years, depending on how big your list grows. 
<laughs> you're not getting that from the stock market. So here's the way I operate. To get businesses like yours out of the spam folder is a one-time investment of 3K. Paid only after I successfully get you out of spam and install my spam prevention code on your landing page. So if you don't get out of spam and you don't stay out, then you don't pay anything. All I need is access to your email service provider and between one and six weeks, depending on how bad the problem is. Sound fair enough? Once again, shut up and see what they say. You'll probably find that around one out of three people will agree to these terms, in which case send them over a basic agreement outlining your terms. And then it is time for the fifth and final step, delivering what you promised so that you can get paid. And luckily, because you clicked on this video and you put your trust in Uncle Sean, I'm about to spill all of the sauce right here, right now. And I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to do this step by step. Grab a notepad and pen and let's roll. So in order to help people get out of the spam folder, we have to first know what's causing those emails to go there in the first place. So if an email lands in the spam or the junk folder, it's most likely one of the following four reasons. Number one, they're using spam trigger words like horny milfs in your area want to fuck you tonight. Or, hi, I am Nigerian prince. I am stuck in the desert and I lost my wallet. But if you lend me just $1,000, I will give you 10 million as soon as I get back to my palace. Guaranteed. I promise. Just send me $1,000 to my PayPal, Nigerian prince at thisisnotascam.com. You talk like a spammer, you'll get treated like a spammer. Reason number two is your open rates are consistently below 10%. Your emails are so bad that Gmail deems you not even worthy of the promo tab and throws you straight in spam jail. Ouch. Number three is your domain is blacklisted, in which case you're a bit fucked, I'm gonna be honest. There are ways that you can get out, but if the damage is that bad, you're probably better off just making a whole new domain and starting again. Or number four, there's an error in your SPF, DKIM or DMARC records. Now, this is gonna get a little bit technical, but I will do my best to explain this in a very easy to understand way. Thank you. All right, remember, 3K on the line here, pay attention. What these are is essentially authentication methods that help prevent spammers and scammers from sending emails under someone else's name. Kind of like a fake impersonator account on Instagram. So you can think of these records as kind of like a bouncer at a club or an Instagram blue check, right? To confirm who you are, who you say you are. Without these, email would be a terrible experience, right? Full of scammers impersonating everyone. Imagine if anyone could send you emails pretending to be Amazon or the government, shit would hit the fan pretty quickly. Now, if one or more of these records fail, your emails may well go to spam or even disappear completely. And scammers may also be able to impersonate you and scam people under your name, which if you have any shred of morals whatsoever, you probably don't want that. So the way it works is that SPF and DKIM are either pass or fail, and DMARC has three options. Reject all, accept all, or quarantine. Now, I've never heard anyone be able to explain these in plain English, so the best way I can think of to explain what these records do is this analogy that I spent an hour coming up with. So for the small price of you obliterating the like button for this free value, here we go. So. Close your eyes for a second, and I want you to imagine that you are no longer yourself, but you are world famous, internationally renowned DJ Marshmallow. You have a big headline show at a major club and you walk up to the door girl, AKA SPF, with your helmet on, ready for your show. But she's not easily fooled, right? She goes, hey, you know what? If you're really Marshmallow, what's your real name, huh? You go, Chris Comstock you say, with a smirk. She checks your VIP guest list. Chris Comstock is indeed on the list. In you go, she smiles. You have passed the SPF record check. Now, this is a very basic screen, but it's not very secure because anyone who knows Marshmallow's real name <laughs> with a simple Google search could drop it to get in at the door. And then we get to the next check. The bouncer, AKA Deakim, puts his arm out and he stops you. Not so fast, you pasty white wanker. You're the fourth person to walk in here wearing a bucket helmet like that. I need you to take off the helmet and show me some ID. Don't know what the fuck that accent was. We're just gonna roll with it. You show him your face and your ID and they match. He scans it under the UV light and the hologram checks out. He checks their public record and Chris Comstock really is Marshmallow. And your ID says that you really are Chris Comstock. Therefore, you really are Marshmallow. The bouncer apologizes for calling you a wanker and lets you in. Deakin passed. 
And just when you're about to go on stage, you get a tap on the shoulder. It's the club manager, Gmail. He says, there's a bloke outside who claims that he's your friend. Do you know him? You take a look, but you don't know the guy. He's pretending to know you so that you can get in, but it is your guest list. So you get to decide whether this random guy gets in or not. You tell him to politely get fucked and then you go and you play your show. Demark rejected. You smash your show and you head to the VIP table with the promoters. The adrenaline is pumping, bottles are flowing, life is good. And then all of a sudden you get another tap on the shoulder. It's the club manager again. There's another person outside claiming to be friends with you. You take a look and once again, you don't know who they are, but she is a hot blonde and you have a weakness for blondes. So you let her in anyway. This is an example of DMARC set to none or accept all. Not recommended by the way. So there you are, you're necking on with this bird, sipping champagne, living your best life. You're in the perfect, intimate love bubble until once again, that bastard of a manager taps you on the shoulder. There's yet another person outside claiming that they know you. At this point, you're just sick of being pestered and you just wanna enjoy your night. So you tell the manager to just decide for you. So. He lets the person in, but he restricts them to a dark, dirty corner of the club, AKA the spam folder. So that way they can't pester you in case they're a psycho stalker. This is DMARC set to quarantine. So you head home with the attractive stranger, but she turns out to be a Russian spy and steals all your money and then slits your throat in your sleep. Rest in peace, Marshmallow. So allow me to explain what the hell I'm talking about here. The SPF or sender policy framework is a list of all approved sending partners that you've given permission to send emails from your domain. For example, for seanferris.com, I send my daily broadcast emails from Active Campaign. I send automated welcome emails from ClickFunnels. I send support emails from Google Workspace and I send receipt emails from Stripe. So those four sites are on my SPF allowed list of sites that are allowed to send from seanferris.com. The SPF is the door girl at the club. She is going to check your domain's guest list to confirm that the software sending the email is in fact on your approved list of senders. Now, if someone's sending fake emails pretending to be me and they're using MailChimp, which I don't even have a MailChimp account, that's not exactly going to fly. Your SPF will fail and your email will go to spam or even disappear entirely. But if the scammer happens to also send from ActiveCampaign, which I also use and is on my whitelist, then they would pass. So you can see why this isn't the most secure. Next is your DKIM record or domain keys identified mail. So understand that all emails that you send are sent with a unique signature that lets the receiver know it's really you and that the email hasn't been tampered with or intercepted after it was sent. And in case you give a shit, this is done with cryptography. You send with a private key and the receiving server matches it up with your public key to decrypt it and validate that it's really you sending. So DKIM is the bouncer. You pass the door girl's guest list, SPF. Now the bouncer needs to check to make sure that one, you match your ID and two, that it's not a fake ID. <sighs> Who am I kidding? I can tell you're falling asleep. So. Just remember, right? You're gonna make $3,000 from this, all right? So wake up, pay attention. Pay attention and you can learn a lot. <laughs> Last one, DMARC tells mail servers what to do when DKIM or SPF fails. Now, as I mentioned, there are three main options. Number one is reject. The email bounces and is never delivered, right? So that was the random guy outside the club who we decided not to let in the club. In this case, your emails would vanish entirely and not even make it into spam. So that way, if anyone was sending emails pretending to be me, I would have this policy set up so that no one could scam you under my name. The second option, as we mentioned, is none slash accept all. So this will let the email go through as normal. So this was the attractive blonde who we didn't know, but we let her in anyway. The third option is quarantine, which we let the club manager, i.e. Gmail, decide for us. Now, in most cases, it will put the email in spam, which was the example of letting the random stranger in, but restricting them to a dark corner of the club, AKA the spam folder. Now, here's the thing. You actually get to set your DMARC policy. This is why I was saying it was your guest list. You get to decide what you want to do. So do you want to be able to allow scammers, i.e. the Russian spy who stabbed you in the back, to pretend to be you and scam people under your name? Probably not. That's why Marshmallow was brutally murdered in the end by the cute blonde who was in fact an impersonator and actually a Russian spy. 
It's a far-fetched analogy, but it's all we have, all right? So the only reason that you would leave it set to none is either for testing or if you were having DKIM and SPF problems with your own emails and they were getting rejected and not even reaching your subscribers. However, most people actually have it set to none through sheer negligence. Without enforcing quarantine or reject, you're actually leaving your subscribers vulnerable to phishing, spammers and scammers, and damaging your brand's reputation. So all three of these records actually need to be manually set up by copy pasting text records from your ESP in your DNS records to your domain manager, i.e. GoDaddy or whatever you use. I can tell you're about this close from clicking off this video, so I'm not gonna go into details here because you'll probably fall asleep, but you can view setup instructions in this video here. And last, you can check your SPF, DKIM and DMARC records with free tools like Google Admin Toolbox or MX Toolbox. So, that was a lot to take in. Those are the four things that can cause an email to go to spam. Either one, the content of the email, two, super low open rates, three, a blacklisted domain, or four, your records are broken. I still have not worked out how to do the four finger thing, by the way. So if you're gonna fix this for this client, then how do you identify the root cause and tell which of these four is causing them to go to spam? Well, my handsome and spry friend, let me explain exactly how. Step one is to set up two test accounts, just like we talked about in the last video about the promotions tab, one active that you open emails with and one inactive that you don't open any emails with. Send a test email to yourself and see where they land. With your active test account, check the label, either primary or promotions, and also the SPF, DKIM and DMARC records. Hit the three dots, right click, show original email, boom, there's the records. Step two, you wanna to go to postmaster.google.com. You wanna check the domain reputation, the IP reputation, and the spam rate to make sure that it's below 0.1%. Just note that you will need to have DMARC set up in order to see this data. You can Google on how to set this up. And again, you can watch the video I mentioned 60 seconds ago on how to set that up. Step three is to use additional tools like Mail Genius or MX Toolbox to check for red flags and blacklists to see if you are on any blacklists. If all of the above look fine, then you can assume it's because of spam trigger words. So now that we have an idea of what's causing it, we can go about fixing it. This right here is how to get out of spam 101. Now, obviously, if the problem is something to do with spam trigger words, then you're gonna wanna remove those words. If it's to do with your SPF, DKIM or DMARC records, then you wanna make sure that those are set up correctly. If your domain is on a blacklist, then either email them and ask them nicely to remove it because you're following best practices or just bite the bullet and start again, right? Unless you have a really valuable domain like acquisition.com or university.com that Andrew Tate recently just bought, pretty valuable, you probably wanna hold on to that one, then your readers aren't gonna notice or care that you're sending from a different domain. But you do have a decent shot just emailing them and asking them to move it at the end of the day, these ESPs are a business, they wanna keep you paying them every month, and so they're probably gonna be more than happy to help you out. But assuming that you have addressed all of the above and your emails are still going to spam, then bust out the stethoscope because Dr. Ferris is about to prescribe you a treatment plan. That was super cringe, I'm gonna roll with it. To get out of spam, we're going to need to maintain extremely high open rates, click rates, and engagement to show Gmail and these other email clients that, hey, we're one of the good guys, all right? And other people wanna hear from us so that they put us back in primary. And here is how we do that. Step one, if your emails are also going to the promotions tab, you can check this by going to labels and seeing if promotions is ticked, solve this problem first. So this way, if it wasn't in spam, then your email would be hitting primary. Now, some emails will actually slip through the cracks and make it past spam into primary, which ultimately is gonna cause your open rates to increase across the board. Now, you can watch my last video right here to learn how to get your emails out of the promotions tab. Step two, we're gonna need to undergo a treatment period of about one to six weeks, depending how bad the problem is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna segment the list until we're getting minimum 20 to 30% open rates by adjusting your open history cutoff. Remember, believe it or not, your open rates are 100% in your control. You could have an email list full of five people, which is just you and four of your other accounts, and you can get 100% open rate by opening all of your own emails, right? Or you could have a list of a million shitty emails and only get a 5% open rate. 
Now, obviously, 5% of a million, you're still gonna make a lot more money than emailing yourself. You're gonna make zero money, but Gmail doesn't care. Gmail only cares about your open rates. So in Gmail's eyes, emailing yourself five times and getting 100% open rate is better than emailing a million people and only having a 5% open rate. Gmail and these other clients, Yahoo, Outlook, Hotmail, etc., only care about your open rates, not about how many people you send to. So, the treatment. Credit once again to the email king, Joel Marion, who taught me this like five years ago. For a period of one to six weeks, we need to average very high, like ideally 30% plus open rates and or super high click-through rates, ideally 10 to 20% of people who open, we want them to click. And the way we get these crazy high numbers is by segmenting our list to only email 14 day openers or whatever cutoff gets you 30% open rate. Because even though you're in spam, there are still some people who have whitelisted your emails or they have the spam folder turned off and they still read all of your emails. So we like those people. We want to email those people. You want to focus on sending short reply based and get the click emails, either very benefit rich, like copy paste and send this exact DM to 10 prospects right now and you'll have a call book tomorrow, guaranteed, link. Or we could go really curiosity heavy. So it's like, hey, between you and me, this script made my client $3 million last year. I've never shared this publicly to anyone before. So you have to promise to keep it a secret, okay? It'll be available right here for the next 24 hours only, link. Now, after one to six weeks of sustaining these super high open rates and click through rates, your domain reputation should be high. Check Google Postmaster once a day to see. Now, once your domain reputation reaches high, slowly open up the open history cutoff. So then you want to email 21 day openers for one or two weeks and then 30 day openers for one or two weeks and then 45 day openers for one or two weeks and then 60 day openers moving forward. Now, there's no point going past 60 if you're sending daily as they're only hurting your deliverability. Like no one is gonna suddenly wake up on day 61. Remember, oh my God, Sean Ferris, he sent me emails for 60 days in a row and I haven't opened. If they haven't opened an email in two months, kick him off the list, they're not opening. Now, during this phase, you wanna send to your entire list once a week, right? Choose your best email to send to, to give people the chance to rejoin that active list. Once the cutoff reaches 60 days, you wanna send a revival or a re-engagement email to everyone on that inactive list with a short personal subject line, something like, hey, first name, test, remember me, RE shipping, you alive, you know, call them out for not reading your emails and then crack a joke about it because you haven't been sending them any emails to open, make up and then you guys are cool again, right? And then restate who you are, why they're on your list, give them a cool little freebie and send them on their way. This video is so technical. No one's gonna understand a word of this. Now to accelerate your freedom from the spam jail during this treatment period, you wanna do anything you can to get more opens, clicks and replies. Right, you wanna make sure you have super curiosity invoking benefit rich subject lines, ask questions to get lots of replies like, hey, what's your biggest question about blah, blah, blah. Reply and let me know so I can send you more emails and trainings about it. Then go and make the free training or product or whatever and then say, hey, if you want it, reply with the word training and I'll send it over. Or if you're an e-com selling physical products, then you can just tell them to reply and get a discount coupon and have your customer support person send it over. Now bear in mind, it can take up to three months to get your domain reputation too high. So be patient if it doesn't happen straight away and keep sending, right? If you're in spam, the worst thing you can do is to stop sending. This will cause your domain to go cold and you'll have to warm it all up again from scratch. Now, if you've tried all of the above steps with no success, you really have two options. Option one, ask your ESP nicely for a new IP, explain you're one of the good guys and you've followed all the best practices, they might be willing to help you out and move you to a new IP address. Remember, they are a business, they want you to keep using them and paying them, so it's really in their best interest to help you. Or option two, bite the bullet, make a new domain and start again. Warm up the domain with a warm up tool like instantly, restart the treatment period starting with 14 day openers, then resend the same welcome email I mentioned earlier and go from there. Add everyone else back slowly as per the treatment period protocol. And remember, prevention is the best cure. So the final thing that you're gonna do for this new client are the following four steps to ensure that their emails never go to spam again. 
Step one, you wanna use a tool like Neverbounce or Xverify on your opt-in page to prevent fake or spammy opt-ins to begin with. Step two is you wanna set up an automation that removes anyone who doesn't open emails in the first week. Especially if you're sending a free download to their email and they don't bother to open it, chances are like 90% they just gave you a fake email. You wanna boot those people off because they're only hurting your deliverability. Number three is set up a list cleaner automation to remove anyone who doesn't open for a 60 day period and put them on your inactive list instead where they'll only get that one email a week. And then step four is to set up an unsubscribe safety automation where if someone unsubscribes from one list, then they're unsubscribed from all lists and removed from all automations so that you don't get any spam complaints because that is definitely not gonna help anyone. <sighs> And the sixth and final step, the one we have all been waiting for, pass go and collect your check for 3K, 5K, or whatever amount that you agreed on, go about your day. Boom, baby. Okay, I threw a metric fuck ton at you in this video and it is truly a miracle that I haven't lost you, that you're actually still watching this. I'm, My mind's kind of blown right now. So, to recap everything we covered in this video, here is what you're going to do step by step. One, sign up for as many email lists as you can. Two, go to your spam folder and find legit businesses whose emails are going to spam. Three, reach out to all of them with the scripts that I gave you before. Four, get on a call, follow the closing framework that I gave you before. Five, you're gonna identify the root cause that's causing them to go to spam, fix it, and then install the landing page software and the automations to prevent them from ever going to spam again. Step six, collect your paycheck and be on your way. Rinse and repeat once a week. And just like that, you are making six figures as a copywriter. You're welcome. Now, that all sounds well and good, but I know for a fact that less than 1% of people watching this right now are actually going to take action on this. So if that's you, I want you to comment right below, claim your title, report back to us in a couple of weeks and let us know how you get on. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments and I can clear those up for you as well. Until then, my name is Sean Ferris. You are a badass and I will see you over in this next video, which explains how to go from zero to 10K a month copywriter step-by-step step in a much easier to understand way than this video might've been. So I'll see you over there in just a sec.